Hello Need Assist aspirants, this is Dr. Pawan, your surgery educator for the Need Assist on the Prep Ladder platform. So today I'm here to talk to you about a few things. Uh, I just want to quickly share a couple of thoughts over a couple of things. I would be talking about should I repeat like I know that the results of the Need Assist are out and I hope that most of you guys have got your desired rank whatever you wished for and uh, you are all in the process of uh, kind of getting information about the respective institutes and proceeding to join that but i am sure that there are few people who must be in the gray zone who might be considering that you know what should i go ahead with the counseling and see what i get or you know what like um, should i take whatever i get and just progress in my career or should i repeat and should i wait and should i prepare for the next attempt and let's see what kind of comes along Okay, so let's kind of start by talking about this first. So I know that some of you guys must be kind of worried about, yeah, should I proceed or should I kind of stay? Should I try to reconcile that, okay, what went wrong and should I start reading again or something like that? So this is a state of confusion, which does bother many people. I just wanted to share my thoughts over this. Now, what you need to understand over here, guys, all of you know yourself very, very well. Like, you know... Did you give you 100%? You know your circumstances in life. You know if at all you take a drop and prepare for the next attempt, would you be able to give you 100% or not? There is absolutely no brainer that if at all you work every day from now till the NEET SS exam, even if your rank in this particular exam is 1000, there's absolutely no brainer that you are, you have the potential of entering into the first 50. It's absolutely no brainer. Provided you read every day, provided you work in a progressive manner every day towards that particular target. Are you in the state of mind to do it? Are the circumstances around you kind of uh, willing or conducive for you to kind of uh, keep reading and uh, keep working for that particular target? Can you afford eight, nine months more of break at this point of time? All these particular questions will be best answered by you. But I would just say one thing, don't keep things hanging on. I mean, don't see that, you know what, let's kind of see how the uh, counseling goes by. And then after the counseling, I'll decide whether I want to take that particular seat and proceed or uh, I should repeat or something like that. If at all there is a doubt and if at all other kind of boxes are ticked, like you can afford to take a break of six to nine months, you still have this stamina and enthusiasm and the zeal to continue to read and you know that you are a smart chap and you will kind of make it happen. If all these three boxes are kind of ticked, I would say that you decide, you can take seat if you want, no issues at all. If not, you can just sit back, cut off yourself from everything and kind of start proceeding towards the learning process. Because by the time the counseling ends, it is going to be at least one, one and a half, two months from now. After that, once you start reading, there's going to be a bit of inertia and you will already be around one and a half months back. Just my thoughts over it. You can still apply for the counseling if you want, but don't be actively involved with every decision of the court case coming up, with every discussion of one particular seat or one particular institute. Don't be actively involved into it. Just give, let's say, one day, make your list, put it in the counseling and just forget about it. If at all you want to repeat, just kind of... Uh, start preparing and start reading in a kind of constructive manner so that is about the first thing should i repeat i these are my thoughts over it now let's say if you told you decided okay you wanted to repeat or for that matter the freshers who are basically coming up you might be considering that you know what in this particular year there was 60 40 and the paper of general surgery was very very tricky i mean there was one paper where there were so many questions from the pediatric surgery point of view. On the other hand, there were other paper, like other set of the general surgery, which had a comparatively um, simpler questions or something like that. And you must be scratching your head considering that, you know, what, what resources should you read and what is going to help or what is going to come in the next exam. I'm sure that this particular question must be boggling your mind. The truth is, no one in India knows about what exactly you should read so that the next year whatever the paper comes is you will be in a best possible manner to answer all those particular questions nobody knows and if at all somebody says that you know what they know they're lying nobody knows 
because it's very very unpredictable i mean who expected this time that out of 40 around 15 questions will come from pediatric surgery absolutely not possible so in such a scenario what you need to understand is that you have to go ahead and prepare general surgery in the holistic manner you have to kind of go through these three books obviously all of you guys know that these are the three books most of the times this schwartz is something which is kind of neglected by the students now if when it's general surgery only general surgery exam you cannot afford to neglect it because even this time at least four five questions were there from schwartz which were direct from schwartz okay which were not given as directly in the sabastin and which were not given in the levin bailey so you should not neglect these three books just go through them is it possible for you to kind of mug up every page of all three books no not really in these three books also there are certain areas which you know that they are very very important and certain areas which are really not that important so try to kind of go through these books in the holistic manner whatever the important i'm not saying just read the important topics no not really you have to read these books in and out like obviously entire in totality but focus yourself try to uh, kind of make that bird's eye to kind of understand that you know what this might be asked as a question or this might not be asked as a question don't be very fanatic about the numbers you know every time you come across a number 5% 10% no not really the dnb pattern is also changing they're not focusing just on the numbers and even if they ask you statistics if you would have noticed in a proper manner it is not some random statistics it is a statistics which is actually relevant for that particular disease for example they might ask you that if at all there is a upper urinary tract transitional carcinoma what is the chance that the bladder carcinoma may occur after that it is around 40 50 60% so this is relevant okay they will not ask you any random statistics trust me and even if it comes it is going to be a couple of questions which is not going to be a rank decider so my take on what resources you should use obviously these are the three books the whole india knows it what you need to understand is try to read these books from the holistic perspective try to understand that disease process and try to think like an examiner try to think about the clinical scenarios over whatever the topic you're reading if at all some percentage comes try to see whether that how this particular percentage is relevant for that particular disease so even if you don't remember that particular percentage in totality even if you have a gist of it even if you are able to place it you know like with respect to that particular disease that is what is going to help you and then the lot many resources including prep ladder there are various other resources available on this particular platform use them to kind of help you in getting through them you can choose whatever you want no issues but use them to support your preparation for these three books i mean nobody can teach you whatever is there in levin bailey sabastin and schwartz page by page nobody can do that okay uh, i mean at this at least at this point of time they have not done that what we need to understand over here is that use the resources there are n number of resources available in the on the market at this point of time but you know be vigilant use those particular resources in order to help you digest these books in a better manner okay so even for the test series i would say that there i have uh, gone through a couple of test series which are just kind of uh, taking every line and kind of framing it into a question might not help what is going to help you is understanding that particular disease process in a kind of a structured manner trying to understand what is the crux of this particular thing and trying to understand why that particular clinical scenario can be asked from that particular topic okay now how to study now i will i'm i will make one particular video on how you should kind of go about and study and what should be your schedule and everything if you can afford you can kind of take a break but again sometimes taking a break is also uh, increasing your procrastination so i'll leave that up to you you want to study while working it's up to you you want to study by resigning and sitting at home that's up to you that's fine no issues at all i would suggest that during your study preparation because again like every individual is different everybody's priorities opportunities circumstances are different in their life so that i leave to you you can kind of take a decision on that but you know always like whenever you are in this particular journey you should always go back to yourself talk to yourself and check whether you are going in the correct direction or not so 
this is a quote which I personally feel that definitely going to help you in, you know, uh, might work as a kind of a North Star, might help you in kind of guiding what kind of preparation you want to uh, achieve. So let's say getting a really good rank in the upcoming NEET asset, let's say within 50, is equivalent to building a really big wall in the world. Okay, so let's say what Will Smith says, he basically says that uh, you don't set out to build a wall. So let's say achieving your that rank 50 is like within 50 is building a wall. Okay, now you don't say that I'm going to build the biggest, baddest, greatest wall ever built. So you don't say that, you know what, I will be so damn sincere that I'm going to get the first rank in the upcoming NEET SS exam. Yes, it should happen, it would happen. But if you just fixate your idea on that, you know what, I will read all the three books and I'll revise all the three books two or three times or something like that. Quite a big target, your mind might not be able to digest it. So you don't start there, you don't start there. Where do you start? Uh, so you say that I am gonna lay this brick as perfectly as the brick can be laid. So you basically say that, you know what, today is the day for, let's say, esophagus. I'm going to read Ecclesia Cardia to the best of my capacity, okay? Uh, I would read Ecclesia Cardia so that I understand each and every aspect of it and I understand like the basic disease process. Maybe I don't mug it up, I don't remember it entirely, but I do understand the pathogenesis. I do understand the clinical scenarios behind it. And you basically do that with every topic you do. Ultimately, every uh, kind of um, section you do. So let's say you start by Ecclesia, then you master the esophagus, then you master the GIT, and then you proceed and master the pediatric surgery, and then you proceed and master the kind of plastic surgery. And these are the small bricks in your pathway, right? So if at all you give a tangible targets to yourself, let's say next four days, I'm going to read pediatric surgery from Schwartz, Sabastin, and Levinbidi, and I'm going to master it. Tangible target, achievable target. Rather than your mind will not be able to understand that, you know what, I'm going to read the Levinbidi, Sabastin, and Schwartz in totality in the next three, four, five months and revise it two or three times. Your mind will say, okay, that's fine, that's great, good for you, okay? So more achievable, more tangible target is you focus on smaller tangible things which your mind can kind of understand which you are able to quantify at the end of the day and regularly keep a check on them so that is what i would just say you can just go to this quote this was something which has always resonated with me i hope that this is going to help you through as well so you don't um, you do that every single day and by the time you kind of uh, realize you have built the best one in the world okay so i hope you understand this point and this is just a way of kind of putting it up so uh, harsha bogli also says the same thing he basically says that you know what in the cricket you focus on the next ball you don't focus on the entire 50 overs so it's the same thing like focus on the next day focus on the next topic do it to the best of your capacity and if at all you continue to do it every day till the next neat ss exam i'm sure that you're going to get a really good rank i would try to make a video on how I feel you can read and what are the resources, what are the things which you can use. I would try to do those. But yeah, that's all for today. It was just a random thought kind of a video for you. I hope you liked it. See you next time. Have a great day. Happy studying. See ya.